for a few different things. That's a relatively specific question. Um, of the three main components of, of this, I, I meant the ITS. Yeah, I, yeah, I assume <laughs> you meant ITS rather than SIT. Um, but so, what what are the three? What are the intended effects of the of the training? in the eye of other people. <laughs> well, that's a bit like that. Who was it recognizing? Yeah, that one. Uh -huh. Recognizing textures or something. Mm -hmm. So we're in the paper. Can we find these? It was on page uh, yeah. 24. So it's, it's this one. The list of the Skills, like eating a banana. <laughs> That's a social skill? <laughs> you're not supposed to look at <laughs> someone in the eye when you're eating a banana. Look at the eyes of another part and one was looking at the other where they are looking? Or was it the same? Well, no, that, that, is, that is a different uh, thing. I forgot yeah. the other one. And, uh, yeah, because that's the facial recognition, like uh, acknowledging where the avatar looks and then looking at the interaction. Yep. Why wasn't there something like recognizing that it's a happy or angry avatar? Um, so yeah, so um, yeah. So it's correctly identifying where the where, where the person is looking. In. Um, you know that's one of the problems with when you like humans do that. Humans do eye um, gaze tracking. Uh, animals don't. So when you when you point at something and you say, um, go over there, dog, right? They don't track from your eyes through your finger to where you're pointing. They look at your finger, right? Because they already do it. A small <laughs> small kids don't do that neither. It's really small kids. <laughs> yeah. So they have to learn to do that. They have yeah. to learn to do it. It's a really hard skill actually, right? I mean, technically, like from the the physics of it, you've got to do quite a lot of processing to work out where the eyes are looking. And going through that point and finding the point of interest in the distance from that, right? It's a, it's a challenge. But animals don't do it. And you can trick people saying, "Look at this." with my normal way of perceiving things. Um, so yeah. So no, I, 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 I read through, having read through the question, I generally think these questions are reasonable quality. You guys, you guys are getting better at asking. <laughs> the yeah. paper is not good quality. Your guys' ability to yeah, and yeah. That's, that's why it's, I think it's not so clear the, some of the answers because the comparison is and, and because they're not mentioned directly. So yeah. you you had to hunt them. Yeah, a good paper would answer these kind of questions yeah. well. Yeah. Right. So almost one of the ways of thinking of okay, if you guys are writing a report. If you look at it from this perspective, mm. right, as you guys as students who are studying something, what questions would you have about the area? And do you answer that? So right? a question about how to uh, ask these questions. Should we mm. ask things that are obtainable within the paper? Or should we ask things that we wonder based on whatever is written in the paper? I'm happy with both types of questions, yeah. right? So some papers. Um, a good question is is one of the kind like the research was well answered by the paper, right? And so it's a, it's a good question. It says you know this is this is a question that is well answered by this paper. It's easier to find the answer, right? And it's an interesting question. It, it says something about the value of serious games or about the condition it's in or about the kind of general knowledge area. Um, and so one that a good paper will answer that question well. A poor paper might answer the same similar question badly. Right? So um, it, you could you can think of a, a group of generic questions. And on the front of page, um, I have some of those kind of generic questions in here. Um, of the the kind of um, if you are doing a general analysis, you can start with these kinds of um, so what are the research questions? Do they actually mention research questions? 
or do they just tell you what they're doing rather than actually saying why, like a question they were trying to answer? Um, what is the end of What are they actually studying? Is it effective games? Is it effective their treatments? Is it effective motivation? Um, is it uh, how long people do something? It, like, what is what are they actually measuring? Um, the relevant concepts. So, have they given you good background? Right. What are they mentioning all the things you would need to know to understand what they're talking about, or have they made a bunch of assumptions? Like, um, is the rate of violence increasing? Right. So, Bushman talked about you know violent video games, but is there any increase in violence um, violence among people who play violent video games? In the population, and there isn't any, right? So he doesn't mention that because it doesn't back his particular narrative about violent video games. But are all the relevant concepts there? Um, and what do they want to achieve? Now, sometimes they do basically a back projection. You do something, you look at what you achieved, and then you say that that's what you wanted to try and achieve. And so you, you do a post hoc analysis and decide that whatever you came up with was what you were intending to come up with. Okay. Um, and uh, the fallacy is sometimes called the Texas sharpshooter fallacy. All right, so what you do is, you know, if you want to prove that you're a really good shot, you go, you get a gun, and you fire eight shots at your barn. Then you walk over the barn and you paint a red circle around the shots and then a white circle around that, and then a big blue circle around that to make it look like you hit the bullseye. Right? Did you call that thing? The Texas sharpshooter fallacy. <laughs> so, because, <laughs> yeah. Um, and, and, and it reverses cause and effect, right? You expect that someone did a target and they shot at the target. But in that situation, what they do is they do something, see what happens, and then claim that that's what they were aiming at. No? Um, and it, it's one of the biggest problems with research. It's hard to draw that out, right? Um, so, and you'll find this like when you talk about scientific methodology, that ninety-five percent confidence. Have you guys seen the jelly bean? Yeah, the jelly bean ninety-five blue jelly beans make you fat to a ninety-five percent confidence in it. Okay, because what you do is you measure every color of jelly bean. And if you measure 20 different colors, then you know, 5% confidence is one in 20. So for a 95% confidence interval, so long as one in 20 of them, if it's only one in 20, then it's still 95% confidence interval. So it is within your sampling area that one of your samples would show you that it causes obesity. Every other jelly bean you tested didn't, because you know your sample meant that it was within the ninety-five percent, so it was one, in, it was the nineteen and twenty. But that's what confidence is important to me. And the problem is, if you measure a whole bunch of stuff and then test everything without an hypothesis, you get this post hoc. Oh, we found this effect. If you do that, you then need to start a whole new study with that as the effect you're trying to measure and see if it's true on just that case. Right? Otherwise you get this screwed up situation where um, I measure enough stuff, one of them's gonna be significant. Right? Just on the random sampling that I'm doing. Okay? So, so yeah, you've got a, that reverse causal effect. Measure something and then say it was what you're aiming for. is very different to saying, okay, we tried a bunch of stuff. This looks like it might be interesting to study. You then go and study that thing. Okay. Um, and yeah, so I, I then, then we can kind of categorize narrow, broad, target audience and those sort of things. Um, so no, I don't mind which kind of questions you Hopefully, GoRad will be ready for next week. For voting, yeah. For voting. So we'll actually be able to put votes up and start giving you guys points. And we'll gamify it, see if that works. Or if it just hypes it. We've been hyping the game for a while. <laughs> <laughs> Building up your expectations. Then there's, we'll see if we can get you into a trough of disillusionment <laughs> <laughs> with the course. Like, you'll probably find this with your masters, right? You'll start your masters all enthusiastic. About a month in, you'll go, mm. <laughs> and then hopefully you'll become productive.
PhDs have the same. Up and down. Up and down. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, so what I want to do, I, I, I know I should give you both a break. I didn't give you a break. Um, but we'll finish early-ish. <laughs> <laughs>